Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. It is really a pleasure for us to have in Al Hikmat studio attorney Mr. Eric Bowman. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. And Mr. Eric as a man with a lot of experience, over 30 years plus experience in immigration law, serving the people here in the United States of America. He presently resides in New Jersey, and we are really fortunate to have him with us in Al Hikmat studio with all this experience on immigration and his kind, the kind of cases that he has fought and the kind of things he has done in the field of immigration stay tuned we're going to have a very educational discussion with attorney eric bowman and uh, that will definitely benefit you viewers because uh, we got viewers worldwide and immigration to america is something very international and very worldwide so stay tuned as we continue this discussion with mr eric himself In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuha Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik, wa illam taf'al, fa ma balagta risalatuhu. Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to spread the message of the Quran. And he told the Prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet If we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. $3, 10 Quran, $30, 100 Quran, $300. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhum. If you would like to dedicate copies of one of these publications as Sadaqah Jariyah, continuous blessings for your parents or dear ones who have passed away, or fi sabidullah in the path of Allah, please give us a call so we can place your names on these dedicated publications. You can call us at 954 986 0158 or you can also visit us at www.alhikmat.com. Allah is the creator of different faces Allah is the creator of all races Allahu 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 Allah Al Hikmat in collaboration with Atlas Immigration Foundation now offering free professional immigration consultations and affordable services We work with all types of visas and immigration statuses the office is located inside the Al Hikmat office building. For more information, you can contact us at toll free 1 888 963 9163 or 407 242 5140 or contact the Al Hikmat Dawah office at 954 986 0158. Yes, Mr. Eric, so tell us a little bit what motivated you? To get involved in immigration <laughs> i know i'm sending your brain more than 30 years back <laughs> sure right? sure sure well it was an interesting moment i've always been uh, sort of worldly in the sense that i have my law degree i have a political science uh, degree also and i have a african-american studies degree as well but uh, so i've always been into and i've i, I married a woman that was from her family's from the bahamas so i was always in the caribbean all the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but um it was at one point in so time... So you were born in New Jersey? I was born in New Jersey. Yes. Right, right, yes. So at, at one time, I was uh, transitioning from New York, where I went to law school, down to Washington, D.C. And there happened to be a project that the American Bar Association and the uh, American Immigration Lawyers Association was putting together down on the border. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up meeting some people, and they said, hey, are you interested in this? We need some attorneys down on the border defending the rights of, at that point in time, it was mainly Central American refugees who were fleeing the wars, the civil wars in Central America, and they were coming over the border from uh, Mexico into Texas. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge detention center down there called Port Isabel Detention Center. 
And, and so I said, okay, I'm interested in it. And I went down to the border on this project, and it was just four of us, really. The famous Mexican border. The famous Me Mexican border, absolutely. <laughs> that we hear tr Mr. Trump talking all about. <laughs> absolutely. Good, and we're going to get into that conversation. Okay. We want right. to talk about Mr. Trump, sure. President Trump, and the war, that big, great war. <laughs> all right. I mean, I'm sure that our viewers will be interested to hear oh, something sure. about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I mean, I, I will disturb you here and there in your conversation Absolutely. because I'm going to be thinking like the audience. Mm -hmm. When you say something, what will be passing through their mind? And I'll probably ask those questions. All sure. right? Absolutely. Yes. All right. So, so at that time, I uh, it was four of us. It was a uh, Project Libertad, in a sense, and it was at the border. We were in a little little building, mm -hmm. um, and I was defending every day the individuals who were caught at the border, doing bond hearings, change of venues, so that I can get them off to their, you know, to their family members in New York, Miami, where Chicago, etc. Interesting. So every day, 10, 20 cases. And this a is a, this is how many years ago? This was in 1991. Wow. 1991. Yeah. 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 And um, so we, we did that, and I felt, well, oh, I was a young attorney. I said, I like this. I like helping people. Um, and it, it, was, it was fulfilling. It was fulfilling. And when I left there, I went back to uh, Crystal City, Virginia, which is outside of Washington, D.C., and I created an immigration uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, it was kind of funded by Church World Services at the time. And it was mm -hmm. mainly focused on Haitians, actually, who were fleeing. They were coming over from Guantanamo. They called it Guantanamo Bay, boat lift, et cetera. Um, and uh, they, were, they were coming over to the United States when they were fleeing the revolution in Papa Doc or Baby Doc, in a sense, back in, uh, in Haiti. Right. So there was thousands and thousands coming in. So they mainly hit here in Miami, but the other main aspect was that they were hitting the D.C., Maryland area. And so I was representing them there. I probably had maybe 500 Haitian uh, clients at the time applying for asylum for them mm. uh, in the D.C. area, and mainly the Maryland Eastern Shore, because there was a lot of, we were able to obtain employment for them through all the farming operations and things of that nature on the Maryland Eastern Shore. So I represented them all for uh, asylum. But then at one point, um, money dried up, because in the nonprofit world, it's what's the hot topic? So yeah. things kind of switched into AIDS at that moment, and when they switched into AIDS, then HIV/AIDS uh, fu you know, funding, then immigrant funding dried up. Oh, so, okay. so at okay. one point, Church World Services said we have no more money for these projects. So I had to take that group and take it into a private practice that I opened up called the Immigration Law Center in Arlington, Virginia, mm -hmm. and I, I grew that from a one-room office to a three-city office, you know, wow. over, over the course of, say, seven years before I left Virginia, over the course of seven years. My first hire still works with me for all those years. Isn't that yes, he interesting? He works virtually for me from home now, but he still works for me. I hired, he's the first person I hired. <laughs> and what was the name of that company again? Immigration Law Center. Immigration Law, law Center. Center. So right. you still exist on the Immigration Law Center. Correct. Yeah, officially we still exist in the Immigration Law Center. Yeah. And that office is officially based in New Jersey? Correct. Yep. North immigration New Law Center. Right. Wow, that right. is interesting. Yeah, and we, we were in immigration, if you, if you want me to continue, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we founded some of the first cases. So uh, we were the first uh, law firm to do Violence Against Women's Act case, VAWA, under VAWA. Mm -hmm. uh, we were the first one to do under VAWA we, in court, what they call suspension and deportation of our cases, we were the first ones to do that in the Virginia and uh, which handled Washington D.C. Immigration Court as well as the Baltimore Court, because we had offices at that point in Alexandria, Virginia, uh, Langley Park, Maryland, and Baltimore, Maryland. So we had three offices by by 2000 by 1998. We had three offices, and we also had a major case because uh, we handled the first case for a client in the United States, a successful case for her to win a woman fleeing um, uh, female genital mutilation, wow. matter of Kasinga case. So that was my case that came to me, and I ended up having to take it to the Board of Immigration Appeals, and we won it, and now it became a segment of immigration. Any woman fleeing female genital mutilation can automatically apply for asylum in the United States. Beforehand, they didn't meet it, the classification, they didn't meet the classification and they would be denied. So in my case, that case became precedent. Right, so, mm -hmm. so that got you all involved into this immigration right. services because you just love to help people. That's right. <laughs> I think that is really interesting, and mm -hmm. that's uh, that's a good character. Mm -hmm. That's a good. That's that's. Um, I mean, when you talk of good characteristics, sure. it's good to have that in your person's personality, the 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 feeling to care for other people. Right. Because no. I would want to. 
believe that uh, immigration services is such that if a person does not care for other people, you will not want to go the nine yards uh, to help other people. Absolutely. You know, what, what happened at one point was that the, I had a young, my youngest son was born in, in Alexandria, Virginia, and he was a preemie. So he was three months uh, early. He was born three months early. Mm -hmm. And the doctor told my, my, my wife that, hey, uh, you need to be in a dry climate because there's this uh, virus in the air of any place that has this humidity mm -hmm. that kills preemies, you know, if really. Wow. So at that point in time, my wife was like, okay, we're moving to Arizona at that time. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and I tell you this because the, I left, you know, I didn't want to leave, but I had to do it for the family. And I left my caseload, you know, at that moment with an attorney, you know, and, and an African-American attorney from, actually from West Africa, who was doing immigration for a long time too as well. And I knew him well. And it's funny because all of my clients immediately called me back and said, Mr. Bowman, this guy is not you. This guy has no passion. He just wants money, money, wow. money, money. So they saw right through him very quickly mm -hmm. that it was about money and that there was no concern in his heart to really help you, to fight for you. Yeah, you know, immigration, when you look at it, because people, you know, already migrating, that's a, a need. It's a reason why mm -hmm. they would migrate, whether it's for a career, it's a profession, education, whatever it may sure. be. Mm -hmm just to have that heart and that feelings for someone will really motivate a person. Otherwise, it's like X, Y, Z, you just right. won't care. Right. And Absolutely. do you come across that with judges, immigration judges? Yes, I've, I've had my time. You know, what happens is that uh, a lot of, uh, at one point in time, especially in the 90s and early 2000s, um, a lot of the judges were former prosecutors. So they were former prosecutors for the government and right. they became judges for immigration. And they had this kind of tough nose, you know, attitude that everyone's lying. Because, oh. because maybe from their experience on one side, because there are a lot of people. That's a good point. That's a good there, point. There's a lot of people lying. There yeah. are. But, but, so they believe everyone's lying. So therefore no story is good enough. And, and uh, there's a case and I, and I kind of, could we call that, uh, and, and I've done this many times, I fight. So I, I like what so. you said there, <laughs> everyone is lying. You know, right. it's the famous saying, everyone is guilty until proven innocent, <laughs> right, right? Right, right, right. That's how people look at it. <laughs> sure, sure. So in the eyes of some of these immigration judges, right. it's like everyone is lying right. unless proven truthful. Right, absolutely, wow. absolutely. So, you know, this is important for viewers to understand mm -hmm. how immigration officers think or at least how most of them think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I would think this is the same way some of the guys at the airports and at the borders oh, sure. would also think. Right. They just look at everybody as some false person right. until they can prove something truthful right. and legal. Right, and they attempt to catch you in a lie. Oh. They attempt to catch you in a lie. So you have to be smart enough not to start telling a story that you don't know the conclusion to, <laughs> you know, or, or, or a statement of questions and you don't know what the final answer is yourself because they were saying, well, that doesn't make sense. You just told me something different. Oh, my God. Right. So, is, so therefore, therefore, is that the reason why they ask you these in interesting questions? Absolutely. Very simple. They will ask you something there. Sure. And if you get off the wrong track, you, you are going to be in a mess. Sure, sure. It's, it's, it, 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 it translates to, as I tell people, for uh, even marriage interviews. Yeah. And they say, well, how did you meet your wife? And if you start down the line, oh, we dated and we went to the movies. Oh, never, never say I went to the movies. Uh-huh. Well, Why? what movie did you take her to? Uh, Superman. She says Batman. Wrong. Now you've got an ex. Wow. So now they're starting to believe they don't, they're not together. It's not a real marriage. So you've, you've got to make sure what you say that you, that, that you and your wife at that point know what it is or you don't mention it. it does, it's not important. It's not important what movie you went to. What's important is I love her. Yeah. Right. And she loves me, no matter what age, or disability. Because they can't deny that. Yes. And that's all it's about. My version of a marriage could be different than your version of a marriage. But if we love each other, we're married in the immigration terms. Process me, give me my green card so I can leave. So it's not about... <laughs> because... You may just be right. She mm. may probably remember Batman movie. Right. <laughs> and you probably remember um, <laughs> Spider-Man. Right, right, right. And you could both be right, right. but in the immigration officer's eyes, right. you're lying. Absolutely. 
because so. your, your story does not sure. add up. Yeah, I heard someone say, oh, you call your best friend Shorty, she calls him Joseph. And, and she said, well, Shorty was there. He said, well, wait a minute. Your husband said Shorty was there. You said Joseph. No, no, that's the same thing. I call him by his, you know, his given name, his birth name, and that's the nickname that he grew up on the streets with his friends. Yes. But they misunderstood. But that's an ex, you know. <laughs> Immigration <Right>. officers <laughs> don't want to hear those kind of stories. Right. I like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Bowman, I mm -hmm. mean, a man like you with 30 years of experience, and I love that. I mean, you have this company called Immigration Law Center, and I'm sure you would have helped so many different people. Huh? Mm -hmm. Virginia, mm -hmm. New Jersey, and what other state were you based in? Uh, well, th that was based there. When I went to Arizona, I actually, because remember, I had to move those cases yes. over and left at the last minute. I actually joined a firm actually in Arizona, and it was a different animal because we started representing the corporate side. Mm, so I was counsel Mo Motorola, Intel, Microsoft, and we were doing engineers, doctors, scientists, researchers. So we ended up doing the other side of the, at that particular point in time, and that was out in Arizona. So you were doing cases for these kind of immigrants that Correct. came to the United States on jobs and career, etc. Correct. Correct. And we were doing probably 1,500, 2,000 cases a month. Mm -hmm. Seven yes. attorneys, 45 paralegals. Yeah. So when a man with your background sure. and your experience, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you must have met the toughest of judges around town. Okay. Mm -hmm. You would have met all yeah. these kind sure. of judges that would have blown your mind. Right. So what, 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 what really motivated you to spend your time and share your experience and your knowledge and your services for Atlas Immigration Foundation? Well, Atlas, you know, I, I ended up um, hearing about Atlas and, and its director, Derek. Uh, Derek and I have had many conversations about what he wanted to develop here in, mm -hmm. in the state of Florida with Atlas. And I thought it was a great idea. Um, my view was always, how do we help as many people as we can? A lot of times I'm in detention centers, I'm in courtrooms, and no one has an attorney. There's, there's statistics all across the board that, you know, if you don't have an attorney, you're going to lose your asylum cases, you're not going to be able to progress. And it's true because the average person won't know what to do, what to say in court. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when Derek had this idea, hey, let Atlas grow here in Florida and let us represent the people who mm -hmm. have no representation. And, right. and, and therefore, I thought it was a great idea. After all these years, that's something that I wanted to definitely devote some time and attention to, to, to help people. And in the early years, you had already founded and were part of um, a nonprofit sure. immigration services organization, right? Yeah, I, I have over exactly what Atlas is doing for the public, I've done always in my entire lifetime. I've always gone to religious institutions and given free seminars and advice. Um, I've done uh, where they have, have a huge Haitian population in, in the city of uh, Irvington, New Jersey. I, they gave me the whole city council headquarters and for one week I sat there and I gave free consultations to anyone who had a question from the entire community or the surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. We have the knowledge that we have. Why not spread it? Yes. You know, I don't need to make money off it. Sometimes you got a question, but an attorney says, oh, come to my office, but give me $250 for the question. <laughs> you know, I can give you that question. Right or wrong, I'm going to tell you, if there's something can happen, then I'm going to tell you that we can help you. And if, if we can't help you, then I'm going to say, if anyone says that they can help you, they're looking for your wallet or your purse, they're not, looking, they're not going to be able to help you. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tell you the truth right from the beginning. You know? So when you speak about detention center, tell us a little bit about what goes on there because you mentioned a little while ago that there are times you're there, the judges are there, and these um, cases are there, people are there, and they got to face the judges, and they have no lawyers, they have nothing to do. What really goes on? Give us an example. Well, if you don't have, what's going on is that each of these detention centers probably have about 10,000 inmates inside yeah. of them. So people don't realize how big that they are. So you're going to go inside of them, and they're going to have court every day. Even now, they're in COVID, immigration court outside for non-detained persons were, uh, were closed. But in, if you were detained, they were having court every day. Oh. You know, I, had, I had my last case for a detained person because it uh, was March 20th. It was my last case for a detained person. And, and you know everyone was canceling cases, attorneys. And I said, well, if I do that, then this young woman will sit here for who knows how long. She's already sat here for six months. It already took her six months to travel 
uh, from Cameroon to to the border in, in the United States to try to apply for asylum. Mm -hmm. Now, is she going to do another year? Maybe she's going to get COVID while she's detained. Mm -hmm. You know, all these thoughts you know go through her mind. But she had her case. We, I went in, you know, with uh, with our mask. You know, mm -hmm. they, we we do it with the mask on, and we have the hearings, and we won that day. I knew I could win her case also. Oh. You know? And we won her case, and within 48 hours, she was free with her family in Los Angeles. You know. And um, that was an asylum case for a Cameroonian refugee who traveled across the globe in a sense right. to get to America, stood in line at the border. Her number was 770. So she had to wait for 770 people in front of her at the border to tell their story and to see if they had a credible fear of persecution. She's, she finally got her story told at the border. Then they arrested her. Uh huh. <laughs> so you got a good story, you got a credible fear, and then you're arrested. Mm -hmm. You're detained in a real jail, right? Right, with all kind of people, criminal aliens, and refugees, whoever it may be, at with you. Yeah. And you're sitting there waiting for your hearing, and you're in. You're pretty much in a situation where majority of the judges there will think that you are lying, or everyone there is lying. Mm -hmm. Your case is going to go so fast when you're detained. You're going to have your hearing, your bond hearing, one day to say within uh, one week from the time you arrive, you will have a bond hearing. And if you don't have uh, relatives and, and, and uh, family here in the United States, you're not gonna get out on bond. And if you have, uh, in some cases now, back in the day, a bond was $500. A bond was $2,000, mainly mm -hmm. was the highest bond. Um, last time I was in court for bond hearing, the bond was $20,000 for a person. You had to pay wow. $20,000 to get out. Most refugees don't have $20,000. No, no. I was able to get a bond for, for my guy for 7500 because of certain certain circumstances that had already started because he was free and then was arrested, and he shouldn't have even been arrested. So I've got his bond down to 7500 Most uh, families don't even have 7500 just to get him out of yes, jail. Yes. And that's a cash bond, not a 10% bond. Oh. That's full cash. Wow. There's no 10%. So, you're, so most people won't get a bond anyway. It'll be denied. And if you deny your bond, you don't get a chance to request a bond again for six months. But your case is going to be 30 days from now. Your hearing, your final hearing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if your final, if you went to court right now in Miami, your your case would be if we were in court today, your your next hearing for your final hearing would be 2023, three years away. So you're going to be in jail. Well, if if you were in court in Miami and you were out, is what I'm saying, non-detained. Right. Okay. Your next hearing would be uh, three years from now. Mm -hmm. for your final hearing. If you're in jail, your next hearing is in 30 days or less. Okay, okay. So generally speaking, a, a, an attorney like you with that sort of experience in the immigration world, I would say immigration mm -hmm. field, immigration world, um, a, a person got to go and face a judge. Mm -hmm. As long as someone like you represent them, what are the possibilities for them to to not be deported. You were mentioning something like that before we, sure. we came on the show, right. that as long as a, a genuine attorney right. s takes that case and speak to the judge, what are their possibilities of not having to be deported right away? Oh, 100%. Oh. 100%. So you're saying as long as there is a, j a lawyer who can come and defend this person, you can put them in a category that they will not get deported right away, right? Correct, correct. And then they may just get off the hook and everything will be... Yeah, because the key is that if they have a hearing three years from now, mm -hmm. all right, anything within that three-year period of time could change the case. The laws could change. They could have a... Oh. Their, their time in America it could go from one year to ten years. We yes. have then cancellation removal defense. They could get married, so we can go back and say, oh, he's married now to a U.S. Mm -hmm, citizen. Mm -hmm. We have a different process. A number of things could occur during that period of time. So you want to be out and you want to be free. And you're working and taking care of your family. Yes, yes. So as long as you have the right lawyer in this immigration field, uh, you see what I'm saying? Correct. You are more or less 99.9% .9 set to go, eh? Well, set to extend your time as far as your cases yes. and have a better shot at winning your cases. Not that you're going to win. Sometimes I have to tell a client, look, more than likely we're going to lose because maybe you've got a criminal background of some sort. It's just not going to happen. However, based upon the law, you, your case in the time frame is going to take three to five years. 
So now with me, we can make these arguments, we can make these appeals because there's certain things, facts, scenarios that we can argue that can get you that five years in America working, taking care of your family versus if you went in there by yourself, more than likely you're going to be ordered to leave the United States in 30 days or deported physically. If you don't have a legal representative, huh? Correct. Wow. So tell us about this $500 thing situation, this uh, deposit or to retain um, legal services or sure. with Atlas mm -hmm. that you were talking about before we went on the show. Sure, absolutely. Well, what happens is a lot of it's, it's been based upon the mission of Atlas and, and my sitting down with Derek and, and also the, what my experiences were. And as I shared my experiences that, hey, I'm in detention centers all the time, and the gentleman, while well, I'm there, just say, I may be the only attorney. There may be a hundred other people waiting for their hearings. And I start talking to him. I said, guards, can I talk to him? And I just start sitting, you know, round table. And, and why are you here? What's going on? What are you going to do with today with the bond hearing? Da, 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 da. And they tell me their stories. And I, I said, well, wow, you, you, shouldn't be you shouldn't be deported for this. There's laws that will protect you. Mm -hmm. I don't have an attorney. My wife's out there trying to, you know, uh, get money together. They want five thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars, eight thousand, twelve thousand, etc. And I'm thinking, wow, I'll do it for free right now if you retain me later on. And I know you will because no one's going to walk in this door and help you the way I'm going to help you right now. Um, you know, and I, so I, be I believe in you. And, and whether you do or not, I did a good deed. I'm fine. I, I feel good about it. Right. So, but everyone has five hundred dollars. They may not have $5,000, but everyone can put together $500. Even if they don't have it, their sister, their brother, their cousin, their neighbor, someone can go $100 here, $50 here, and they can put a family pool together and come up with $500. Mm -hmm. And I said, Derek, this is what we, we want to offer people because they can come up with that. If we represent them and say, if you have $500, we will take your case, then they will all have representation. Maybe the gentleman just needs to get out of jail, out of detention, so he can get back to work. Because mm -hmm. they have jobs, mm -hmm. they, and, and they're doing, whether it's cash under the table, so they can come up with a, a monthly payment to pay you. Yes. So, so uh, the mission of Atlas, kind of this new campaign that we're on, is that for $500 deposit in your case, in some cases maybe settled for the whole 500 because maybe they just need a simple procedure, then uh, we would take your case. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Eric Bowman, we have been talking for approximately 20, five minutes now all right very interesting so we got to go on a short break okay and when we come back mm -hmm. we'd like to let our viewers know some specific cases mm -hmm. that for example you know for example I, I, I just for the benefit of our viewers mm -hmm. a person is experiencing this mm -hmm. a person is experiencing that mm -hmm. how can they benefit from Atlas Atlas mm -hmm. Immigration Foundation because mm -hmm. I'm sure viewers probably wondering who or what is Atlas mm -hmm. and uh, how can they benefit because uh, our viewers are worldwide and there are people somewhere somewhere in the world mm -hmm. who got some family some relative here in the United States of America who would be having some kind of immigration service sure. and we want to talk a little bit after we come back from the short break as to how they can contact Atlas and whatever case they have, if they can present that case to Atlas and if Atlas can help them. And meaning with your experience, sure. with your 30 years plus immigration services experience as an attorney uh, with that kind of background, because I mean, America is based on immigration. Correct. It's a powerful part. It's a pillar of the United States of America. Absolutely. So stay tuned when we come back after the short break. We will continue our conversation with attorney Eric Bowman. And we'll learn a lot as you have been listening from his experience and we'll be talking to the man himself, listening directly from the horse's mouth, as they would say, on ways and benefits around immigration services and how people can benefit and how they can keep on the right track. So stay tuned until we come back. Assalamu alaikum. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bismillah rahman rahim Ya ayyuhar Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik, wa illam taf'al, fa ma balagta risalatuhu. Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ to spread the message of the Qur'an. 
And he told the prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet ﷺ. If we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. $3, 10 Quran, $30, 100 Quran, $300. Al Hikmat in collaboration with Atlas Immigration Foundation now offering free professional immigration consultations and affordable services. We work with all types of visas and immigration statuses. The office is located inside the Al Hikmat office building. For more information, you can contact us at toll free 1 888 963 9163 or 407 242 5140 or contact the Al-Hikmat Dawah office at 954-986-0158. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al-Hikmat TV 24-7 online. So we are continuing our conversation with attorney Eric Bowman, a man with over 30 years of experience in the immigration field, an attorney who has helped thousands and thousands of people in the United States of America in his field of immigration services. So those of you who have just tuned in, stay tuned because you're going to benefit a lot. Benefit a lot. You may probably not need some direct immigration services, but I'm sure you have a friend, a relative, someone somewhere, somewhere in the world that can call Atlas Immigration Foundation and can benefit from the uh, the experience, the knowledge, and the services of uh, Attorney Eric Bowman. So, as we continue, Mr. Eric, sir, and uh, yes. a pleasure again to have you in Al Hikmat Studio. We ended on the note of helping people, assisting people in the immigration field from Atlas Immigration Foundation or whatever, maybe from Immigration Law Center, whatever may be the case. Sure. Tell us, like, for example, I'm just saying, what case a person came to the United States of America, they are getting a hard time to get their work permit, um, they came in legal, for example, they came in with a visitor's visa, mm -hmm. their time went beyond their six months, something like that. Sure, they got sure. what, what do you, out of status. Mm -hmm. What do they do? How do they call you for help? They well, want to work, they want to live in the United States of America. Right. Do they, they need to get married, they don't need to get married, mm -hmm. or they are married? Tell us. Sure. Well, the, 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 always the easiest way in the United States for an immigrant, especially one who may have entered with a visa, they came in as a tourist, they came in on a student visa, F1 student visa, et cetera, the best way for them to immigrate to America mm -hmm. is marriage. It's always been marriage. Mm. Right, always been marriage. So if they're able to find a husband or a wife, et cetera, who's, who's a U.S. citizen to marry, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then they can apply for permanent residency here in the United States. Um, so we get a lot of that in the sense that the person's here on a tourist visa, they fall in love, they want to stay in the country, and, and they immigrate through. And there's a difference if they're illegal, meaning walked across the border, uh, to the point or if they are actually came in a tourist or a F1 or some other visa right. legally and were admitted, they can then adjust here in the United States. They're going to go through a process where they file their paperwork here in the United States for the visa and the green card application. And then they're going to be interviewed here and in, say if it's Miami in the Miami district office and there's going to be an interview. Normally when you file your application within 90 days you'll receive a work permit and a travel permit. The work permit now they put it on the same applic they put it on the same card. So the bottom of the card would say travel authorized. Mm -hmm. So that person who came in on a tourist visa overstayed now has married a U.S. citizen. We apply for their applications which we can do through Atlas they will receive their work permit and travel permit within 90 days. They can immediately start traveling around the world. They're good to go in and outside of the United States immediately. Right. Their interview is going to take maybe six to eight months or longer, maybe 12 months given the COVID delays and so on, to have an interview here in the United States. At the interview, they're going to go through really a 15 to 20 minute kind of an interview questioning. And it's mainly to see, have you been in the military? Do you know guns and so on? All these questions, have you been arrested, et cetera? And to make sure that they have the right, that they are in a sense in love and that they have some sort of identity documents, which they would because they would have their work permit. 
Mm -hmm. I always recommend to, to, the, to the couple, make sure that your driver's license that you just got or, or you know, is the same, meaning your address is 100 Broadway, make sure your wife's address on there is 100 Broadway. Because mm. the first thing you do, they ask before they swear you in, can I see your driver's license? Right. Right then and there, if yours says uh, Tampa and hers says Miami, we've got a problem because they now are concerned that maybe you guys don't live together. Interesting. So make sure you have that because you, then you started it off wrong <laughs> wow. if, you, if you don't have it. I normally attend these interviews. A lot of attorneys don't go with their clients to the interviews. Mm -hmm. I go with their clients and I just sit back in the back and I make notes just in case any questions that I know because I'll know their case, you know, I'll know it like the back of my hand. Mm -hmm. If they said anything wrong, again, the movie thing. Yes. You know, if they say anything wrong about the address. Because what happens if you say something wrong and they suspect that it's not maybe a marriage and since um, it, for whatever reason they can then call you back in for another interview mm -hmm. and at that next interview they're going to separate the two of you they're going to have a camera pointed at your wife for an hour and ask her questions and they're going to have a camera pointed at your husband in a different room and ask them the same questions right and this is where they know if you know each other if you live in the same house so how I prepare my clients, and a lot of attorneys don't do it this way, and I end up getting their clients later on when they actually say, hey, we've got a problem, I gotta go for this in another interview. Mm -hmm. My attorney doesn't even wanna go because a lot of attorneys don't even want conflicted cases. They just want simple things to make their money. So can you go, can you help me? But I prepare my clients no matter what, right from day one, every client, be prepared for these questions. Right. Where do you live? Oh, apartment number, apartment number what, 102. Is that a first floor or second floor? Is it a walk up? Yes. Is there a knocker on the door or is there a doorbell? Mm. Okay, sure. There's a doorbell. Okay, or there's a knocker. Okay, great. You go inside. What do you go inside? Tell me the floor plan. Okay, tell me the kitchen. Stainless steel appliances, white appliances, black appliances? Tell me. You need to know all those aspects because they're going to ask you during that interview well, what color is the uh, refrigerator? And if you don't know the color of the refrigerator and you're supposed to live there for three months or three years, then they're going to say wrong. And they start listing these things that you got wrong in order to try to deny you. Right. Right. So right. I make sure that they're both prepared for that. Even do you drive? Where do you park? Garage? On the street? Oh, your husband catches the bus. What bus does he catch? Oh, bus 28 to go to work. Okay. And he walks to the corner and then catches it. Okay, great. What day does he get paid? Okay. Because... Uh, most husband and wives know when they get paid, when their spouse gets paid. Mm -hmm. So they know. You know, what's the rent for the apartment? You know? And if there's questions to it, and I just had a complicated case in New York that an attorney didn't want to do, and they told the woman, hey, you might as well go and, and go underground. And I said, go underground? Who would tell you? What, what attorney would tell you this? Right. Meaning, like, stay illegal, go underground, and start over again. And I said, okay, I'll take the case. We got the husband and wife together, and, and, and I said, look, we're going to go over these questions, but it's not just about the questions. It's because the husband says, well, I, I give my wife the money and she pays the bills. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Just tell her every week when I get paid, I give her $750 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Be honest about it. They feel that they've got to cover that up because the attorney said, hey, you need to have a joint checking account and so on. He said, well, we don't have a joint checking account or we don't, I've got bad credit or this and that. So we don't have certain things that we have or mm -hmm. the apartment was in my wife's name before I moved in. And in this case, case, he had a legitimate case is that his father was dying. Mm -hmm. um, his father had a small restaurant that he had to oversee. It was, it was a 45 minute commute between there or an hour commute between there, depending upon traffic. Right. And, and that he also had a sister who had a son and, and the father wasn't there. So he acted like kind of the father for the, for the little boy. So at times he had to kind of stay outside of the city and take care of his father, his, his mm -hmm, brother, mm -hmm. family matters and business matters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he didn't see his wife every day. Mm -hmm. So when he went for the question for the interview, well, what did you watch last night? And, and, and if you say, oh, I watched CNN or something, well, tell me, what, what, was, what was the story? What was the subject matter? What happened? Or what movie was it? And the attorney wanted him to do that sort of thing. And I said, no, tell the truth. And when we went for the interview, tell the truth. I had to do this. I was out in, in, in outside taking care of my family matters. I didn't come to the house last night. I met her uh, this morning, her and attorney at Starbucks, and we walked over here to the, to the federal building. The key thing is to right. keep on the truth line. Keep on the truth, right. right. You don't have to, because I get a lot of people who, maybe for business, oh, well, I got transferred. I'm in Texas working in IT, but my wife's in Miami, but we're still together. There's still love there. Yeah. This is funny. I'm in, I'm in here. I got promoted, and I had to go take the job. 
And, but a lot of people think, oh, I've got to be in the household, I've got to sleep there last night. No, tell the truth. The issue is love. Right. And they can never debate that. So this is all about getting your green card status. Right, right. Now, someone gets married, mm -hmm. now that couple gets married, sure. and they have lived for three years, right? right. Mm -hmm. Is that how it works? Before you get yeah, you, you get apply a for citizen? You get a conditional green card, good for two years. Mm -hmm. At the end of two years, 90 days before the expiration, you have to indicate that my uh, we're still together. You follow, you follow an application, we're still together, and here's new mortgages, rent, rental slips, uh, utility bills, et cetera. Right. Or I'm asking for his signature to be waived because we're separated or we're divorced. Mm -hmm. But I have enough evidence from before to show that it was a good faith marriage. Right. And that's, this is tricky for a lot of people mm -hmm. because they say, well, what's the evidence that I need to prepare just in case I'm not with my wife or if, I am, if I'm filing for it, to show that we're still together. Okay, so a person gets that mm -hmm. and now have their three years and they are ready to apply for citizenship. Correct. Um, what, any, any complication with the citizenship now after they have been married for three years, good marriage, everything? The most important thing with that is that if it's good marriage and they're still married, that he's filed his taxes. Okay, and then that he hasn't left the United States. I always tell people, if you've got a green card, and if you're planning to be a citizen, then you should spend time here in the United States. But if you're not planning to be a citizen, then when you travel, make sure you don't stay outside of the United States for more than six months. No more than 180 days. Mm -hmm. Because if you do, it gives the guy at the border the right to question you. If you don't, and you come in every six months up under that number, you can just come right into the United States at the border. He cannot, he's not going to question you. Um, he's going to say, oh, welcome back, Mr. Bowman. Thank you. And you just come in. Right. But if you stayed over that 180 days, he has the right to question, did you abandon your stay, your residence in America? And he can start asking you about your rent, where you live, uh, how long you've been there, who's in the apartment. He can begin asking you those questions. So always travel back in with 180 days if you have a green card. Right. right. So the husband and wife complication for citizenship does not really create an issue again after you have lived for three years. It, right. As long as you've been paying your taxes because they're, they're questioning. So now they're paid. more about your taxes. Correct. They're not w worried about proving if you're husband and wife anymore Correct. because even if a person happens to divorce after three years. Mm -hmm. No, no. Well, if, if, you, if, you, if, you were, if you gain your green card through your spouse, you can become a green card, a, a citizen within th uh, three years. Right. If you have not gained it through that, then it's five years for anyone else to get their citizenship in the United States. Right. But my question mm -hmm. is, if after three years, mm -hmm. before you get your citizenship, right. you and your wife divorce, okay. does that affect your citizenship? No, not at all. Oh, okay. That was the question. Yes, yeah, not, not at all. Yeah, you're a full-fledged citizen, so that's fine. As long as it was legitimate marriage. Under Donald Trump, he's created a naturalization unit to denaturalize people. Well, so what they've is that gone, now? Like, so he's created a unit of attorneys that go back in and look at cases to see if you lied so, or misrepresented, meaning that the marriage was fraudulent in the beginning. Because, what, okay. because a lot of people pay people to marry them. And mm -hmm. sometimes that relationship goes sideways before the interview. I can tell you hardship stories for mm. people who've lost everything that they've owned, furniture, assets, the whole thing, by, those, by someone that they thought was going to help them get a green card. Wow. And, and still never showed up at the interview for the green card. Yes. And so you have that, but you also have people who write in and say, it was a fraudulent marriage. And therefore, they go back and they can look at that and take away your citizenship. So under this new law by President under Trump, right, they correct. can take back your citizenship if your, or your marriage was not authentic. Right. But you were saying if the marriage is authentic right. and they have lived together for three years, mm -hmm. and then they got an official divorce, mm -hmm. normal, mm -hmm. the person can still go ahead and apply for their citizenship. Correct. Absolutely. Excellent. Now tell us a little bit, we got a, just a five, ten minutes sure. again. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the, the, the religious aspect, because mm -hmm. I have always learned that religion mm -hmm. and missionary work in the United States of America has always played a major role, mm -hmm. marriage mm -hmm. and missionary work. Mm -hmm. So what, what is that all about for the benefit of our viewers here? Someone wants to get 
into the United States of America to live, to study, to get married, or whatever it may be, and they want to come through the religious process. They are religious. Mm -hmm. They have religious qualification. Right. They want to go through their church. Sure. For example, sure. What, 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 what? Absolutely. In in the nineties, I used to actually create churches, you know, for for pastors and ministers, in order to uh, build their flock in the in the community. But also, they were able to bring in a number of different pastors or religious workers or, or missionary work mm -hmm. in a sense. And and I've done a ton of even spiritual organizations that are not quasi churches, but kind of spiritual organizations they qualify for the same thing. So it's, it's a great resource in a sense for actually to build a church, to build a church community, to build a community, to build a, a maybe even an educational school and academy, mm -hmm. because you can bring in scholars from abroad who are coming in. That's my point. Right, absolutely. So the, you have the- and, and just to cut you again, sure. so Atlas Immigration Foundation, mm -hmm. someone abroad wants to come to America and come through a church, or the marriage case you spoke about, mm -hmm. they can all contact Atlas Immigration Foundation. Absolutely. And you will be able to guide them. Atlas Immigration will be able to guide them and help them through this case, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, okay. Atlas will be able to represent them in any immigration matter. It doesn't matter if it's marriages, uh, religious worker, if it's deportation, if it's employment based, we can handle that too as well. Right. So just for the benefit sure. of our mm -hmm. viewers, again, you were mentioning, sorry to cut sure. you there, no, no, no. on that person wants to come and get a church to sponsor them here. It, what's so wonderful about the church or religious institution is that once it's, once we have an official church, so it's it's a um, IRS uh, uh, designated as a church as a, as a religious institution. Five hundred one c three. Five hundred one c three. So it's, a, it's an official church. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no issues with that. And then it has its mission statements in order to be a church. It, it will have all that. And they say, hey, I want to hire this pastor. I want to hire a missionary. Now, a missionary is very interesting because pastor, we already know what his religious duties will be mm -hmm. for the church, pastor, minister, etc. All right, uh, but for missionaries, it's interesting. I can bring in um, gardeners. I've oh. done that. Oh. I've brought in gardeners for the church because I'm giving my life as as a missionary to the church. Yes. So, and, and what are you going to do for the church? Because it's going to be the question. Your mission well, is my, to be the gardener. My mission is to be gardener. <laughs> like make that. sure the, the church, the, the, the institution is beautiful. Yes. I'm the gardener. I'm the carpenter. I'm going to build more rooms on the church. I'm going to, whatever role it may be, you can actually come as long as you've given your life to the church. You can do that. Now, what's good about the connection, so there's no concern, I always try to say, let's have a connection. Let's say if you're bringing them in from a certain country, so let's make sure that we actually create a sister institution, affiliate institution in that country, so we can already indicate that the person is a member yeah. of that same. Uh, um, church yes. in, in, in another country. So there's always the question, well, when did you become a member of that church? Because some people may try to you know, get around the, the rules and, and, and they're yeah. not really a member of the church. So we are able to say, no, we have a sister organization that we started in this country around the world and that they've been members there mm. and now we need them to come to the United States to help grow our organization or our church here in the United States. They can be missionaries, they can be cooks, they can be scholars to teach the kids in the school. Um, I think that's a great opportunity to do that yeah because I see that being a big thing I mean oh, yeah. the religious world and sure. the, the the kind of services that people can afford because labor is so expensive in sure. America sure and churches in America and I mean I've been seeing a lot of that mm -hmm. churches in America can benefit a lot by getting people from a foreign country who can come and work for ten times less sure. than uh, uh, an American citizen would work for and economically, it will definitely help the, the church. Yeah, um, by law, the only thing the church needs to offer is room and board. You don't even have to offer a salary. And if you do, you can just offer, say, a small stipend if you do. But room and board is all they're looking for. Yes, I show that they're going to be bored. The church has dormitories, or we have uh, a few members of the church have homes, and this is where they're going to stay, and we're going to provide board for them. And long as the church has some sort of a budget that is realistic, that is a, a so real church. So the church got to show the IRS budget. Well, yeah, we, we because a five hundred one c three doesn't normally have to file right, tax, right? Right. So we don't need to show the, the budget, but we just show projections. I'll handle all that for the church to show what the church normally brings in, so that the church is truly in operation. Or oh, you need to show what kind of income the church brings in, what kind of well, cash flow they got. Especially when we say we're going to hire a pastor and we're going to give him a minister and we're going to give him a certain sort of uh, salary then we need to show that. For the, but we also kind of show it, this in um, 
the larger amount, just to kind of project that this is what the church is doing so that they can understand. Because I want to write about the church. I want to tell you what we're right, trying to right. do for the community so you can believe the truth and therefore you know why we need these individuals. And, and I suppose the bank statement, uh, oh, the yes. kind of uh, the years of operation Very from important. the IRS point of view and sure. all that legal technicality. Absolutely. Or if you own your building, if you're saying he's coming to be a carpenter in your building to expand it, to build houses, to build whatever it may be, that you own your building. I mean, it's just good to, to, to answer the questions before they ask of you mm -hmm. so that you don't get a, a document that says, we want more evidence. So how sound is that nowadays? The oh, church absolutely. services, uh, what I mean, you, know, you, you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying, as, as far as being effective to get someone sponsored? It, it's very effective. And, and the most important thing to think about though, because I have always, I'm asked those questions a, a lot because I, I talk to churches all the time, is that make sure you're just not running uh, uh, an immigrant mill. Oh yes. Right, right, that, that's the key. Because they're gonna be able to see who may be trans, because what's going on, they're coming on visas and then they're changing over to green cards. Mm -hmm, and so, mm -hmm. if the guy's just coming trying to get to America, he's never gonna change over, or his visa, his five-year visa as an R1, meaning that he's just coming for, he's not a green card holder, but he's coming here to work for five years, you know, he just disappears, you know. Right, right. right. So then you've got a bad history with immigration. Yes. So make sure you filter out who's there and make sure that they remain members of the church, and even if they later on get green card and start building their own family and so on, that they remain associated just for the church records and statistics. And the key thing is to be genuine, Correct. you're not lying, right. and you belong to a church in your country, mm -hmm. or you, you see what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and yeah. then you have another church sponsoring. So an Atlas can work around all of this Absolutely. to help people as long as you're on the straight right track. Right, and they can come over with their wife and kids. Their spot, their oh and, yes, and the, the R one, the R one. They can, they give you the entire family to the come. Entire across, family right? can come. Correct. So that your is children can go, can go to school in America, get their education, and start developing their own life, which is the benefit for a lot of people. Want to make sure it's mm -hmm. for the children. So basically, we just got about two, three more minutes sure. again. So we touched on the marriage thing, the religious uh, aspect of people that Atlas can help. And of course, through your expertise and your sure. services and your mm -hmm. your knowledge and experience in the immigration world, what about a person wanted to come to study here now? Mm -hmm. Well, well, study. Uh, is, is How could at last help a person? Just a person back in another country would love to come and join an institution here, mm -hmm. and become a student here, and then finally live, get married, and. Go on. Sure, sure. Well, the, the students thing is, is Atlas can provide them with a list of a lot of universities here in the United States that will issue the I-20 document. Because oh, a student okay. needs to be issued an I-20. Now, Atlas could work with this, this say your institution here and create their own secondary institution that can bring in foreign students. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can do that and get a service number. And now we're able to issue students to come to your learning center here. Yeah, we, we, we'll be able to do that. But the students will be issued an I-20 document. With that I-20 document, they appear at the U.S. consulate, which therefore will then give them an F-1 visa. When they enter the United States, they're going to have an F-1 visa, and the I-94 card, meaning the entry document, is going to say D slash S, duration of status. So they're good to stay in the United States until they graduate from that institution. Mm -hmm. The key thing that foreign students, this is where they get mixed up at, mm -hmm. is that when they transfer, for, okay, if you transfer out of that institution, University of Miami, and you're gonna go to now Florida Atlantic University, you only have 90 days, and that officer at that school has 90 days to transfer your number. And if they don't transfer that number to that other school, you could fall out of status. Okay. So, so that's happening. Uh, we get a lot of students, like right now, we're fighting a case where, because of COVID, the person, in a sense, there's no, it's all online, but the person transferred from, say, uh, another non-immigrant status, they were going to school, they turned 21, mm -hmm. so they fall, fall off of their parents' uh, E2 visa, which is what it was, a treaty investor visa, and they have to now, at 21, get their own visa, but they were attending that school, and now they are transferring to their own. They're transferring to their own F1 visa. So that school issues an I-20, but then you know COVID happens, and now things got kind of backed up. You know. Interesting. This is phenomenal. I I am sure that our viewers out there worldwide would have definitely benefited from your education, your experience, your knowledge, 
Because I think those are the kind of questions that people pay lawyers thousands of dollars and they can't even get these answers. All is stay tuned to Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. And any questions you have, contact us at Al Hikmat TV or just go and check out atlasimmigration.org so you can benefit from the immigration services. Any questions under the sky, inshallah, God willing. And our experienced attorney with 30 years plus in the immigration field can be of you at your service whatever help and you will learn the nine yards after that and how you go ahead to get the benefits from atlas immigration foundation thank you very much and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh in the quran in chapter 5 verse 67 Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya ayyuhar Rasul Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik Wa illam taf'al Fa ma balagta risalatuhu Very deep Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To spread the message of the Quran And he told the Prophet And if you do not spread the message You did not fulfill the mission of the messenger So you and I are followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars, ten Quran, thirty dollars, a hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. If you would like to dedicate copies of one of these publications as Sadaqa Jaria, continuous blessings for your parents or dear ones who have passed away, or fee sabidullah in the path of Allah, please give us a call so we can place your names on these dedicated publications. You can call us at 954-986-0158 or you can also visit us at www.alhikmat.com Allah is the creator of different faces Allah is the creator of all races Allahu, 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 Allah. Al Hikmat, in collaboration with Atlas Immigration Foundation, now offering free professional immigration consultations and affordable services. We work with all types of visas and immigration statuses. The office is located inside the Al Hikmat office building. For more information, you can contact us at toll free 1 888 963. 9163 or 407 242 5140 or contact Al Hikmat Dawa office at 954 986 0158. Royal Bengal Trading, importer, exporter, wholesaler of Bangladeshi Indo Pak groceries and spices. We specialize in various authentic Indian masalas, juices, flowers, rices, and spices. We offer exclusive brands as Ocean Pearl, Sean, National, Tilda, Himani, and many, many more. We're located at 36B Coroni Savannah Road, Charlieville, Shiguanas, Trinidad, and Tobago. You can call us at 473-4676 or call 476-3117. Email us at wahabdk at gmail.com. Friends. The single largest specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances, and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high quality products, honest and reliable service. We are passionate about serving you, and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams, and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Fens first, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960.